Hey everyone, it's Yassi and in today's video we're going to take a look at how to restring a Floyd Rose guitar. This video is created in cooperation with Vera Tools and if you're watching until the end of the video and follow my instructions you will be able to win one of three high quality guitar setup sets in the worth of more than 100 euros. The stuff there is really endurable so you just have to invest once and you will have the guitar setup set for your whole life. This set basically includes everything you need if you want to set up a guitar and even more. We have here different hex wrenches to adjust the truss rod or even smaller screws or bigger screws for intonation and locking systems. We have here different screwdrivers for of course screws. We have here a tiny box where you can put your picks. Of course a string cutter and a quick changing tool where you can get this part of the tool set and make it a string winder which is pretty cool. Or you can use this part and can adjust bridges of guitars like a Gibson SG. Another thing that makes this set quite unique is here the input checker. If you are in the situation of changing your input jack because it's broken and such, this device can keep it in position and you can lock the screw of the new input jack with this small piece here. And another thing that is really handy is that part here. It's a measure tool which comes with inches and millimeters and you can then measure everything on your guitar, string height and anything. So if you want to be sure that all your strings on the fretboard are on the same position, you can just get this on your guitar and you can see whether you set it up correctly or not. Let's just turn to the main subject of this video, enough talking here. So the first thing you might have to know is that there is a difference between a fixed bridge and a Floyd Rose tram system. And the big difference is that the fixed bridge is fixed on the guitar body, which means it cannot move. And the Floyd Rose bridge is actually movable, so that you're able to do all the crazy dive bombs or string squeals or anything you want to do crazy stuff where you need a bridge that is movable. The fixed bridge doesn't include a Vami bar because with the Vami bar you control the movement of the bridge and this is why a Floyd Rose tram system is so so popular in metal genre because you can enrich your playing style with really cool tricks on the Vami bar and the most important thing is why shouldn't you as a beginner Get a Floyd Rose guitar because everyone loves it when you want to record or perform live. So why do beginner guitars mostly include a fixed bridge? The reason is pretty simple, because if you don't know how a Floyd Rose works, then you might get frustrated pretty quickly and beginners shouldn't be frustrated. They should be motivated to play guitar and this is the reason why a Floyd Rose might give you a hard time. In order to reach this extreme movability, there is a system. You have here in the back of the guitar some springs and the strain of the springs and the tension of the strings on the other side are counterparts of each other. So both forces created on both ends equal so that the bridge there is basically fixed and straight and once you kind of mess around with the springs on the back you might also alter the tuning of your strings because the strings and the springs are in balance. Basically, this means you can tune the guitar with altering the strain on the springs on the back side, which is really interesting, isn't it? <laughs> but you might have to keep this in mind when you're using a different string gauge. Why? If you're using a string gauge for kind of a couple of months, you have a setup with your guitar that suits for the string gauge and the bridge will kind of be straight. If you're then changing to a lighter string gauge, like I will do, then the tension of the strings will get lower which means that we have to actually release a bit of tension on the strings because you have less tension on the strings you can use a string cutter cut all the strings on a fixed bridge and just kind of clean the fretboard and do stuff with the guitar polishing it and the Floyd Rose will kind of punish you really hard if you do this because all of a sudden all the strain on the springs is gone and you have to adjust the bridge from zero and this can take like an hour when I did this for the first time it took me one and a half hours I can do it now faster because I know how to but don't do this don't change strings at once do it from time to time why? 
because the lesser the tension difference gets, the easier it's for you to adjust the springs on the back side again. I will now change the strings here to this Delario XT9242 set and this is a different string gauge than I usually use and like I explained I might have to adjust the strain on the springs on the back of my guitar and this is the first thing we will take a look at now. So I will just put this guitar right this and will take my screwdriver and then we'll loosen these screws here so that you can see how they work. These are the screws and I can do here some alteration. So if we are now dialing the high E string, we have it like this and if I will just alter the tension of the spring, something like this will happen. Now I'm getting it more tension. And like you see, the note is higher. So basically I can actually tune my guitar with just adjusting the spring strain on the back. This is why these springs are so important and you shouldn't mess around with them too much. Now we come to the actual string replacement. We will now take the low E string and now we might have to use a wrench for it. It's three millimeters if I'm correct and you have to loosen the screw here to get the string out of this block here. So now we have removed it and now we have to loosen this screw here on the headstock too because it's keeping the string in its position and locked. This is why this is also called a locking nut. You have to memorize how it was adjusted and you see here it has two different sides. Like here is some kind of a higher point and these points here are lower. Don't put it like this, you have to put it like that and just take your screw side here and we switch now to this kind of really useful string winder. Again we apply it here on our fast changing tool and we have to loosen here our string. Now this is enough and I can pull it off and the string is away. <laughs> now I can move on to my new set of strings. I play rather much and these strings last longer. Completely typical for the Dario we have the ball ends that are colored and for each string position we have a different color. We don't have here a fixed bridge. We have to get rid of this ball end because this ball end doesn't suit in here. So we have to take our string cutter, a beautiful red string cutter, and cut this end away. So now we can take our string and put it here in between the space of the bridge and this block here. And we have now to tighten the screw here with our hex wrench again. Don't do it that strong because otherwise you would damage your system. I'm like really paying attention. That's enough, it doesn't move anymore. Um, now we have here our fresh string and we need to put it right under this part of the headstock because otherwise it would go like this and you have a problem with the stability and also it looks totally stupid because it's not meant this way. We have to put it right here and make sure that the tuner here, the whole of the tuner is in the right position so that we can just put this thing through like this. Now it's getting through and like you see we have a lot of bare string. What I do is I always take the distance of two tuners like here and we'll cut it away here. All we have to do is getting this string tight and we will do it by just holding it here and we take our string winder and we'll fasten the string like this and like you see we can do it two ways and actually you just have to find out which way is right on your guitar. This way is right for my guitar, like you see the strings are all heading towards the middle of the headstock and if I would just turn it around otherwise, this is completely wrong here for this model, a string winder is something really handy because otherwise you would be sitting here for quite a few minutes 
And that one here is pretty cool since it's tight and like you see actually I could have cut away even more. Like now I have three winds of the string around my tuna part and actually that's a bit too much but I'm too lazy to change it so I will just deal with it. So and we have to make sure it's really here in this small part of the headstock. Also here on the part on the bridge the string is really tight. Now we can just take our cable and check the tuning pedal. Okay, it's an F. Now that was easy. Like you see, just because we have switched one string, we are easily in tune. That got really fast. You can tune your guitar now and you're done. No, you're not. <laughs> this is the first time where your fresh string is in tension and you might want to stretch your strings so that the string can adjust to your setup. Otherwise, if you don't do this step, your guitar will get out of tune really easy in the, during the next days and you have to set up your floyd rows completely new because you didn't stretch the strings. And we want to avoid it because it's a pain in the... Hmm? <laughs> to change the string on a floyd rose. So be sure to st stretch the strings and you do it like this. So now what we're doing is stretching the string and you stretch the string like the following. You just get your fingers up like this and push down the other part with the string with your thumb because this string hasn't been stretched and needs to get used to the tension we might just stretch it and you are not done when you just do it once because guess what you have to repeat it until the difference of the tuning before the stretching and after the stretching equals zero or near zero. <laughs> this is the thing because if you're also changing to lighter gauge strings you might not be able to tune the guitar at once there but we will talk about this later. Now if we took now a look at the tuning pedal again you will see something. We tuned it to an E but it's not an E anymore so we have to tune it back to an E. I will do the stretching again Okay, it's near the E and I think we just have to do it like a third time and we are done. Okay. Right on. I think that's enough. For rough tuning, this is completely okay. So now you see that we have to do a second string in order to put back our locking part here. So what we have to do now is doing all the stuff again for the A string. You have to pay attention not to fasten it too much because otherwise you would break your bridge. We need to make sure that we don't have that much string left and again I will take the distance of two tuners which is about this and will cut away the rest of the string with my string cutter. Now I can again get the string here in the hole of the tuner. Now when I get the string inside I will just have to get the string past the tuner just a tiny bit. If I would just put it like this, I don't have that much space for the string left so that it can adjust to the tension. And if you want to switch to other tunings then also you would have a problem because there's not enough string left to adjust to the tuning. So what we're doing here is just leaving a bit here, tiny bit, and then we will roll the string around the knob. Now let's see what happened to our E string. It's a bit higher, which means we have also to adjust the E string. I will do this. Now we take a look at the A string. Okay. Now we have to do our string stretching again. That was such a difference. 
And we're done now here with the first pair of strings. Now we're nearly done. The only thing that is left is we have to put back our screw. Be sure not to make it too tight. Now four strings are left and actually it's the same procedure like it with these two strings. And this is why I will skip this part as you have kind of seen how to do it. And I will return to you guys when I have done the changing of the last four strings. So after I have changed all my strings here, I will tune the guitar to drop D and I do it like I said in the beginning with adjusting the strain on the springs. And these springs are on the back of the guitar and we have just to use a screwdriver to adjust the string. Something that is really important is make sure that if you're um, using your string winder that the string itself doesn't cross. So like you see, the single um, parts of the string are really in parallel and not getting across each other. And this is really tidy and normally they should just have like three windings. Now I have a bit too much. <laughs> we want to go to drop D. We do this with reducing the string. So now D sharp. D. Reducing tension. Ah. Now we have to get more tension on the higher strings again. Now that's pretty much nearly accurate. Yes, we are finally done. So like you see, I have done the final tuning here with my springs and not with the strings. That's a fine difference. And now you see here, they don't have to be at the same height because I'm also doing drop tuning, which means the D string has less tension than the E string. And this is why I have less tension here and less strain on this spring than on that one. We can now lock our tuners again. And now we have set up our Floyd Gross guitar to a beautiful drop D tuning. Our tram isn't like this, it's completely straight. 40 minutes! <laughs> but yes, this is the time you need to calculate, maybe even more if you're doing it for the first time. But it's in tune! We're done! Yay! So if you have this rough kind of tuning now, it's all good, you can lock everything down and now the only thing you have to do is the fine tuning and you do it with these tiny knobs there. You won't be able to kind of adjust the tuning right on point and this is why we have these fine tuners so that you can have the fine tuning right now at the end. Right, I hope this tiny video has helped you how to adjust the Floyd Rose bridge with new strings and such. I didn't include the intonation because this is a whole different part, I just wanted to change the strings with you in this video. So if you have further questions, be sure to let me know in the comments below. Otherwise, I have promised you something and we will turn to the giveaway. You can win one of these three guitar setup sets by Vera Tools and the only thing you need to do is subscribe my channel and write a comment. In this comment you tell me why you desperately need this guitar setup set and you need to use the following hashtags in order to participate. You need these hashtags otherwise you are not participating and I will choose the winner randomly on my Instagram account by writing all of your names on a sheet of paper and just... you will see. Yeah, otherwise I hope you stay tuned and work on.
Like always, I want to say thank you for the lovely support on Patreon, especially during this serious time. I'm really grateful for it. You will find several videos on Patreon too and let me know in the comments if you want further tutorials on the guitar, about the guitar. Otherwise, if you like this video, feel free to check out more of my stuff.